How do you use storytelling? What you know? Why is that so important? Well, storytelling has been around all throughout human history. This is how we've communicated forever. And it's super important because it's how we relate to one another and that's how they relate to your brand. So if you just tell them who you are and just put it all in dot points, then A, it's boring, and B, they don't get a feel for who you are and, and can't imagine sort of working with you. So storytelling is how we express emotion, how we build that sort of relationship, that trust, and get people's imaginations working. It's really important because you're not there in person. You don't have that sort of rapport and body language that creating this story gets them feeling. You want to invoke emotion because without emotion, they don't take action. So those stories need to really get them, whether it's happy or sad or frustrated, whatever the emotion is you need to get them feeling something talking with the experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com and Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners and you can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube and today my guest is Cara Stokes and Cara Stokes will be talking to us about copywriting. And the friendly fitness copywriter, Cara Stokes, helps health, fitness and wellness professionals make their words sell. From writing epic sales pages to making their content SEO friendly, she gets their words working for them. A healthy living buff, um, you'll often find her doing a yoga or weight sessions finished off by a swim at her local beach on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula. Oh, my goodness. I... Uh, I love it down there. Welcome, Cara. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about your fitness um, professionals and, you know, how you can help them get their copyright. Sure. Well, your content you produce is um, super important because the words are basically what sell things. So the images are what attract people and the words are what convince you that this is what they want to go with, whether it's services or products, doesn't matter. The words you put on the page in the digital world, because you're not face-to-face, -face, they're really, really important. So um, what I do is I sit down and find out what they need, whether it's a blog post or a website, and we spend some time getting to know their brand, their tone of voice, and then I go and do all the writing and take it off their hands. Yep. So how do you um, actually get their tone of voice? I mean, I know it, because it's hard to um, speak in someone else's language or use their tone. It can be quite tricky, but it uh, depends. Some brands are really strong and know already their tone of voice. So obviously, if you're a solo um, business owner, then often your tone of voice is how you speak. But if you have a team, then the brand can often have its own sort of persona and brand voice. So I spend time listening to um, whoever I'm liaising with, whether that's the business owner or the marketer, and listen to the kind of words they use around their brand, but then also talk about their culture around their brand. So the people that they're wanting to reach out to um, and just the style of how they want to be heard and get a real feel for it. So I spend about, you know, half an hour to an hour, depending on the business, getting to know what they like. And I also ask them and throughout the writing process, there's, you know, we don't just sort of, I don't sit and write it and then send it off and go, here it is. I, you know, we had the drafting process. So they get to say, oh, we don't use that word. We use this one. So there's a lot of client, you know, relationship and input so that we really nail that brief. Yeah, so how do you incorporate SEO into your copy? Well, it's about knowing where to put those keywords is one of the biggest things for your content and your copy. So understanding the main places that search engines look and also um, knowing which keywords to look for. Yeah, so how do you know what keywords to look for or to put in? Uh, I've, I find that quite a challenge for myself. It is quite a tricky topic, um, the SEO with the keywords. So you start with what your audience is going to ask you, the big questions, how 
Um, do you help them? What do you do? Who you are? Where you are? That's the sort of thing that they're going to plug in. You know, if you're a myotherapist, they're going to go myotherapist in Bayswater. They're going to, you know, they're going to look for something that's local um, in those kind of terms. Or if they're looking for a cardigan, they'll type in blue cardigan, women's size, you know, large or small or whatever it is. So you've got to think about what they're going to search for first. Then you go and use some tools to do some keyword research. So you want to look for keywords that have enough searches every month, so a decent volume every month that people are actually looking for them because if they're not looking for them, there's no point putting them in your copy. But you also have to look at the competition and this is where you get have to find this fine balance because you might find a keyword that's got heaps of searches but if the competition is really high you're never going to rank for it so if you're competing against like Nike and Reebok there's no point going after that keyword because they will be all over it so you have to look for keywords that are longer so rather than just going blue shoes you'd go women's blue shoes high heels give them more details longer keywords and you've got a higher chance of ranking for them okay so I've because I the, the, what what I do other than this podcast is um, there's not a lot of competition for what I do. That's good. So how do you find your comp- how do you find your competitors? They would definitely be out there. So what is it exactly that your audience would be looking for? So if they t- popped onto Google, what do you think they would um, type in there to find you? Uh, PowerPoint presentations or PowerPoint. Um, creator or something like that. Okay, so your competition would even be other software. So because so you'd have to start looking for PowerPoint presentation um, creation management or coaching or go get into more details of what it is you do because if you just pop in PowerPoint presentation, you'll get Microsoft PowerPoint and updates and, um, you know, forums on how to do different things. You're competing with all of that sort of stuff. So it's really... Um, nailing and honing down what it is that you do so you can get those longer keywords. So when you say, I want someone to create it for me, pay someone to create a PowerPoint presentation, then that's what you'd be going for. Okay. So how do you use storytelling? What, you know, why is that so important? Well, storytelling has been around all throughout human history. This is how we've communicated forever. And it's super important because it's how we relate to one another and that's how they relate to your brand. So if you just tell them who you are and just put it all in dot points, then A, it's boring and B, they don't get a feel for who you are and and can't imagine sort of working with you. So storytelling is how we express emotion, how we build that sort of relationship, that trust and get people's imaginations working. It's really important because you're not there in person. You don't have that sort of rapport and body language that creating this story gets them feeling. You want to invoke emotion because without emotion, they don't take action. So those stories need to really get them, whether it's happy or sad or frustrated, whatever the emotion is, you need to get them feeling something. Okay, so if you're trying to sell a piece of a pair of shoes, how in the hell can you, you know, put emotion into that? Oh, very easily. So you think about where they're going to wear their shoes. Are they for going out to a wedding? What kind of emotions are they going to have around that? You're excited. You're getting dressed up. You want to feel snazzy. You know, you want to look your sharpest. Maybe a bit of romance, you know, depending if it's for running, then you want to talk about the practicalities, um, nurturing their feet, looking after them. So there's easily a story that can be found in everything. It's just thinking about the situations that they would use that product in and what sort of relief it's going to give them, how it's going to make them feel. And that kind of the story flows from there. Okay, so it's not storytelling in the um, normal sense of the word then, is it? Um, Well, it's kind of a bit of both because you're also weaving, particularly on your website, you're weaving the story of your brand, so telling them who you are and how you started and how you came about. Um, So that's sort of more of the normal storytelling and then weaving them into it and basically making them the hero of the story. So what you want to do is take them from you're frustrated and stuck in this position now and you want to get over here. Now, this product or service is going to get you there and you will be amazing. You're going to launch yourself. So often as business owners, we get into the trap of thinking that what we offer is the hero, but the customers want to be the hero. They want to be in that spotlight. They want to see themselves going to this magical, wonderful place. So it's about taking them on that journey and knowing that what you offer is going to help get them there. Yeah, that makes heaps of sense, yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'll have to relook at my front page now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different way of thinking about it. <laughs> it is, absolutely. So, um, you know, ha- how can people, you know, keep writing um, consistently and, and branding and, and why does that matter as well? Oh, well, branding is really consistent because the more consistent it is, the better brand recognition you get. Like I said before, as soon as I said Nike or Reebok, you knew who I was talking about. Mm. And this is what we want. We want our brands to be instantly recognised. As soon as they see the colours, as soon as they hear certain words, they go, oh, that's Susie, you know, the football coach or whatever it is that you're doing, they know it straight away. So keeping consistency is about using the same types of words all the time. So I might say something is super awesome, you know, and that's the kind of tone and word that I would use all the time. If you're very relaxed and laid back or if you're very formal, they're your tones of voice and they would need to be consistent all the time you don't want to be constantly changing how you sound because it becomes confusing and it takes them longer to realize who's speaking to them because every piece of content you create is like a conversation with the reader you imagine like we're having a chat now Mm. they're just sitting there and they're reading and you're kind of talking to them and having this conversation with them so it's really important to make sure that it it flows so thinking about your tone of voice the types of words you know your graphics your fonts keeping it all within sort of two to three colors two to three fonts your tones of voice pick like three you know if you've got five or ten they'll never get a grasp for who you are and every time you sit down you know if I suddenly jumped up and started being really shouty and then really sort of meek and quiet you'd be like what what is (laughs) going like who is she so it's just about really knowing how you're communicating and keeping that a nice even flow throughout yeah I I, um someone had a look at my website the other day and um and I use the the exact same font I only use one font but one's in bold and one's in in um just regular and they said there were too many fonts and I didn't understand that so can you explain to me you know why using just one font but in different um, um, you know thicknesses made this person think that I was using too many fonts look sometimes it just comes down to personal choice so without sort of having a deeper look and knowing what they're talking about it's a bit tricky but I would say you would want to have your headers a consistent font each time so your main header the same size every time and then your subhead is the same size every time and then your paragraph text the same size every time so if that if those are changing on each page or throughout the page then that may be it might just simply be the sizing oh, um, okay. also be the formatting if you're going you know left aligned center right aligned justified switching that up all the time as well it's a lot of work for their brains so the thing you have to focus on even though we have these wonderful brains humans don't actually like to use them when they think they use calories and they don't want to do that they're trying to use as little brain power as possible so we need to make it really easy for them to just skim read it so trying to keep it all formatted the same makes it a lot easier so maybe that's what was tripping them up well, it could have been i don't know just just seemed really odd <laughs> surprising <laughs> usually that would happen if you've got you know a script font and a big chunky font and you know yeah I would have thought that that's what I was, I'm like, I couldn't understand what she was on about but anyway <laughs> we, we'll move on from that <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about um you know the types of clients that you that you um work with Sure. I work with a lot of health, fitness and wellness clients. So my therapists, mindset coaches, personal trainers, gyms, I've sort of dove into that space because that's what I'm passionate about. But I also work with other people too. I've worked with garden designers, project management um, type businesses. So it just depends on sort of what comes my way and, and how it fits too. You know, you have to have that sort of understanding and be able to relate quite well to each other, um, which, you know, some t- most of the time, you know, people that come to me that, we just fit and that works. But occasionally I'll go, look, I think there might be a better copywriter for you um, because they might just understand the way you want to express yourself better or they might have specialist, you know, um, insight into that industry. You know, occasionally certain industries like, say, technology or science or finance, sometimes it's good to know um, what they're talking about in terms of, you know, the jargon and stuff like that. But quite often it's quite, you know, we do, I do a research around every project. So uh, whoever comes my way I spend time getting to know the brand and the terminology and then turning it into content that yeah really enjoy yeah and that makes sense because you know you don't want to be working with people that 
um, you know, aren't a good fit for you or you're not a good fit for them and ends up being a disaster and, it, it, and you know, the words just don't come out properly. Well, that's it. We're, you know, we're not, no one is for everybody. We all have people that we gel with and get along with and we all have people that just, we just can't quite, you know, even if we're lovely, kind, honest people, it just doesn't quite, you know, it doesn't quite sit there. So sometimes you just need to find that right person. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about, um, you know, what, a co- what you do as a copywriter other than, you know, what you've explained before, just so people get a, a feel for you. Sure. Well, I write social media posts, like I said, blog posts, websites, video scripts, LinkedIn profiles, um, because you can optimise those not only with SEO, but also um, writing them to entice people to get in contact with you. Um, Email campaigns, e-commerce sites, or product descriptions, all that sort of thing. So all your digital words, that's what I work with. Oh, perfect. Geez, there'd be a lot of people bashing your door down now. (laughs) That would be nice. <laughs> it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be good if we were all consistently employed. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what words of wisdom have you got to share for people that, you know, are really challenged with doing their copy and they can't afford to hire a copywriter? That's a great question because quite often we do need to DIY, particularly when we're starting up. Um, we don't have the huge budget there to get someone in. So if you're trying to have a go at it yourself, first of all, never expect the first draft to be good. The first draft is always garbage. I relate it to like when you make pancakes. You know, that first pancake just never rises the same or it's a bit oily. It's just never quite right. So that first draft is just getting all of your thoughts on the page and then you come back and refine it. So people often get scared by the blank page because it's, oh, I've got to get this thing out and it's really important because it's for my business and sometimes you have a deadline so there's pressure. So just take all that away and just sit there and just put whatever down because you'll you'll take time and you'll reflect on it and you'll hone it over time. So that would be my first tip. And the second tip I'd say is to write in batches. So if you're struggling to get blog posts or social media posts out or emails, sit down once a month and do it all at the same time because you'll get that flow building up and it becomes faster than if you pop in and out sort of every few days and try and do it ad hoc. Yeah, so do would you advise like keeping a theme um, for your blogs, especially um, and your social media posts? Like, do you keep a theme like once a month or is it sort of outdated now? No, I would do that because it still makes it easier for you to produce your content, but I would tailor the themes around what they want to know. So for you, it might be um, how to work with you, you know, one month. How do I work with someone who creates PowerPoints? You know, I don't know how to do that. So you might focus on the, the job process. And then the next month you might talk about design principles, you know, and colours that are on trend and things like that. So you can work with themes because it does definitely make the planning stage a lot easier because, you know, sort of each topic as you go, but just make sure that it's really relevant to what they want to know about your business. Um, and so on the morning, but uh, I know you're in the on the Mornington Peninsula, <laughs> which is in Victoria, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and um, oh, near the beaches and all that sort of really yummy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and how's the weather down there, just quietly? It's cold today. We haven't really had that much of a summer, unfortunately. We've had some nice days where we've been able to go and spend lots of time at the beach, but it's still nice to get out and about and walk, but not swimming weather, unfortunately. <laughs> no, so we're same down here in Tassie. It's just not yep. been very nice. It's unfortunate, but never mind. It happens. It does. It'd be nice but- if the eyes cleared up a bit and we got some more blue at least then you get to see that blue summer it feels a bit nicer doesn't it it does so um do you work mainly um digitally or do you have in-person um clients as well all digitally yeah because yeah. i work across victoria and across australia as well so it's all digitally so i generally do sort of one um yeah meet up like this on Zoom for half an hour, an hour, and the most of the rest is just done by emails. And it actually makes it easier because I try to take up as little time as possible because as business owners, as you know, you're already super busy and you just want this stuff to be done. So I try to keep the communication open, let them know how the project's going the whole way along, um, but do as much as I can sort of on my behalf and let them just get on with what they do best. Perfect. And Cara, where can people find you? 
Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn under Cara Stokes or Cara Stokes Copywriter and my website is just Cara Stokes Copywriter. Perfect, perfect. All right, so you've given me your tips and you've given me <laughs> heaps to think about about my own copywriting because, yeah, I'm, I really suck at it. <laughs> and I'm not too ashamed to admit it either because, you know, there's horses for courses, I reckon. Oh, definitely. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. I get other people to do my numbers because that's just not my thing. So, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Do you have any other things that you'd like to impart with us today? Um, I guess one last thing will be you will get better over time. Keep going. If you're DIYing all the time like you and it's not your natural thing and you don't want to outsource, it does, you do get better with time. Writing is a skill. The creativity, you know, can sort of wane and come and go, but the main thing is just keep practising. Yeah, good point. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for your time today and um, yeah. we'll talk again very soon. All right. See you later. Bye.